This is another question that is centered around a movie, a well-known movie, relatively well-known, uh, called The Shutter Island. The Sh in The Shutter Island, we have an ending that is open to at least two interpretations. According to one interpretation, the main character, the guy who appears as an investigator, is somebody who suffers from schizophrenia. He has lost his mind because of a very unfortunate event that happened in his family. He ended up um, killing his wife. And now he's a patient in a mental institute. That's one interpretation. And according to the other interpretation, he is a genuine investigator who is investigating the case of a missing patient in, a, in the Shutter Island, in an island that nobody can escape from, but there's a patient that has been reported as missing. So this investigator is responsible for that case. Now this, uh, the openness of this ending is very interesting. And I think depending on which ending we choose, it, it tells us something about our personal temperament. And it will also, in my opinion, it will tell something about the kind of cultural environment we are living in, what kind of society we are living in. So that if you boil it down, boil down this conflict between the two interpretations, we end up with the conflict between individual versus institute. So is the individual right? Individual's experience, right? First-hand experience from his own eyes, or is the institute right? So if we live in a kind of society where we trust our institutes, we trust people in power because institutes comes with, institutions come with power and they can exert control over individuals, whether or not the individual is right or wrong. So individual can be sacrificed by an institute. If we live in a society where we trust our institutions, then we probably will lean on, or if you're, if you're in kind of individual who trust, t tends to trust power, tends to trust um, institutions like psychiatry, or university, then we side on, we take so the side of the institution and we are willing to sacrifice the individual. We are willing to sacrifice the investigator. And we will call that one person crazy for no other reason other than that he's alone. But if we live in a kind of society, if we live in a kind of context, if you have that kind of maybe personal experience with power that is, that is negative, then we are more likely to take the side of the individual against the institution because we have that mistrust in the institutions that just because the institute is established, just because it has power over individuals, just because it is more powerful, just because it gives us the official story, the official narrative, doesn't mean that it is right. And of course, the, the term that is associated with skepticism towards institution is conspiracy theory. So, if you take the side of the individual, we are taking the side of the theory of, of conspiracy, the theory that explains uh, some, some parts of this be, be behavior of the Institute that doesn't make sense. We won't make sense of it unless we have this theory of conspiracy. That's why it's very interesting in different points in a person's life or in different cultures in different societies, people might be more likely to choose the different interpretations in more conservative societies where people trust power, politicians, institutes, institutions, they will probably uh, say that this guy was, was insane. Uh, he, he was suffering from schizophrenia. So that conflict itself is interesting. That's one point. Uh, the second point is that there is a possible perspective that allows us to accept both of these interpretations because it is possible for this person to be suffering from schizophrenia, while at the same time, the Institute is also evil. Both because of ignorance of the doctors, the doctors at that time, they didn't know that lobotomy, like damaging and cracking the skull or damaging, removing a part of the brain of the, of the person is not the, the best way to deal with schizophrenia. But that's what they're doing. We, we realize that even if we embrace the schizophrenia interpretation, that is still a horrible thing that the doctors are going to do. So the Institute is still wrong. Even if he's insane, they are still wrong. They are, the, the Institute is still exerting their power in a way that is knowingly or unknowingly evil. So it, does, it doesn't mean that just because, even if he has uh, 
killed his wife, even if he's suffering from schizophrenia, doesn't make the institute automatically right and just justified. This is the thing that I usually try to emphasize. That just because the other side is wrong doesn't make you right immediately. You still have to justify your ground on, 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 uh, independently. On independent grounds, you should justify your own position. For me personally, now I'm going to share my own preference. Uh, this, my interpretation is always I, I choose the possible meaning, possible ending, when the ending is open. My own taste, my own preference, or maybe this says something about the way I view the world. I usually choose the most tragic ending. I choose the interpretation that is that gives me the maximum tragic experience, the, the maximum appreciation of tragedy. So in this case, I embrace the ending that, yes, he is suffering from some mental illness, but at the same time, I adopt elements of the other interpretation that this institute is evil, that they are, because they think that they are right, they give themselves the right to treat him in any way they want, which means that they are evil too. They are evil, and he has lost his mind to the main character. This is similar to, when I'm telling you this, giving you this answer, I'm remembering another story where the ending was apparently open, the life of Pi. At the end, he gives a possible interpretation of the characters, what those animals were. And immediately I grab that interpretation because it creates the strongest sense of tragedy. And there's beauty in tragedy. There's a strength in the effect of a tragic story. And I like it. So that's my response. Sorry if I'm not taking side with one of those two. I maintain the openness of the of the, the ending of the film because by keeping it open, we kind of let the movie stay alive. And it, it can travel in different contexts, you can travel in time and see how other people respond to it, depending on their context and how that response of those group, that, that those people, what it tells us about them, about the way they are thinking and they are relating to their institutions and mental illness. That's it.